Hi guys, we are moving on to buttonholes and button samples. So I'm gonna go ahead and do those all as one sample video um, because they are pretty quick. What we're gonna talk about first is we're gonna talk about buttonholes. Um, what I have is I have a six by six piece of fabric and I've just folded it into thirds um, just so that I thicken up the material and I'm trying to just kind of allude to the fact that this would be um, along maybe like the front facing of a button up shirt um, or maybe it's like the cuff of your sleeve where you would have the outside fabric, the fabric on the inside, and then you'd always have a third layer in there of interfacing. So instead of having to put interfacing in here, we're just gonna do folds and thirds. That way you have a triple thickness material for the sample. Um, I'm gonna do that for two six by six pieces. So I have a folded in thirds, one here for my button holes and then one here for my buttons. And you'll see, we're gonna do three buttons sewn on, and then we're gonna do two buttonholes. So what I wanna do is I just wanna kinda of talk over what's in the module already about figuring out your buttonhole size. So for the samples, I wanted you all to do one inch buttonholes. Um, so if you had, let's say, a three quarter of an inch button, which is similar to this yellow button here, if again, you had a three quarter inch button, you would need to add ease to it in order for it to have a correct size buttonhole. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna kinda, uh, kinda do a little sketch for you here on just like a scrap piece of fabric. So again, there's a specific type of equation that you need, and this is in the module again, but the way that that works is that you're going to, and again, I'm just gonna draw it on some scrap fabric. You're gonna take the button size, okay? You're gonna take the size of your button, so it's got two holes. And you're gonna take the diameter of that. So you're gonna measure from one end of the button to the other end, and you're gonna measure across, and you're gonna find the diameter, okay? So we're gonna call that D. And then what you're gonna do is you're going to add to that ease. So again, this is all in the module, but I'm just gonna do it here for you. You're gonna add ease. The reason why you're gonna add ease is because, again, in the module, we talk about the size and shape of a buttonhole, and the way that a buttonhole looks is a little kind of, it's kind of a little funny, it's a really like wide zigzag stitch, so it's got a lot of width to it, but it's really tight. It's just on top of itself. So it goes back about eight times, back and forth zigzagging. It comes down on a, in a really, 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 really narrow zigzag. And then it goes across again with a really wide, tight zigzag. And then it comes back up again with a narrow zigzag. It's really, really narrow. It's really, really thin though. So in, uh, you know, in reality, it's about, oh, I don't know, something, something like that. So it's really, really narrow in reality, but I just kind of drew it big so you can get an idea of what's going on. This really wide zigzag on the top and the bottom of the buttonhole, these are called bar tacks. And these bar tacks are both equal to about a 16th of an inch each. So, Although a sixteenth of an inch might not be that much, a sixteenth of an inch plus another sixteenth of an inch down here is equal to an eighth of an inch. And an eighth of an inch is something that you can see on your seam gauge, so that's pretty big. And that's the amount that we add for ease. So the ease is equal to an eighth of an inch always. So you're always gonna get the diameter of the button, whatever that may be, plus an eighth of an inch. And then if you have a button that's kind of thick, so I don't know, um, a good example of a thicker button would be, maybe you've got this guy here that it looks kind of flat on the surface, but then when you turn to the side, ooh, it's got a little bit of a thickness to it. So if I take my seam gauge and measure that out, it's got about an eighth of an inch of thickness. So if you have thickness, then you're also gonna wanna add thickness, okay? But if you have a pretty standard button, oh, I don't know, something like this yellow one here, super flat, no thickness, even this one, not very thick, kind of just regular, just standard buttons, that's, you don't really need to add the thickness there, but if you feel like your button's kind of big, kind of wide, maybe it's a pearl or maybe it's like a flower shape, something special, measure the thickness and then add that. And so for you know the case of maybe this white one here, we're gonna add our diameter, which is, I'm gonna push across, I'm looking at 7 eighths of an inch. So I've got my diameter, which is 7 eighths, plus my ease, which is 1 eighth, plus about an eighth of an inch of thickness, which is gonna give me a total buttonhole size of one and one eighth inch 
or buttonhole. Now, that means that I am going to draw a capital I, one and one eighth of an inch long. So I'm gonna go to my seam gauge, I'm gonna find one and an eighth, I'm gonna make a dot on one end, a dot on the other, and I'm gonna use my seam gauge to kind of find a straight line to connect the two of those. And then I'm just gonna make a line across and across so I know where I'm starting and where I'm stopping. This buttonhole size will work for this button. And you can kind of see the reason for that, just like my pink marker is kind of thick, my bar tacks, my top and my bottom zigzags are kind of thick. So I wanna make sure that I'm giving room for the slice, the scissor cut that's gonna happen here. This is gonna get full thread, this is gonna get full thread. So I need to make sure that I leave space for the button to actually go through the material. We, for the sake of the sample, don't have to worry about these equations. I just wanted to kind of like lay it out for you so you could see that. For the sake of the sample, you just need to draw two capital I shapes, one inch wide each. So I'm gonna do that. And I am gonna do horizontal buttons because I just want to. So instead of going vertical with my buttonholes, I'm gonna go horizontal. You guys could do one of each. Maybe I'll do that. Maybe I'll do one of each for you. So I'm gonna do, I'll do one of each just because. One dot here, one dot here. And then I'll do a vertical, one of each, boom, boom. Move this out of the way. I'm gonna connect these to each other. And I'm gonna square a line here and here. And then I'm going to do the same thing to my vertical. My vertical's not that straight, so I apologize. Okay. When you have your patterns, they're gonna give you these shapes already. So you don't really have to um, do too much. You just have to kind of mark this onto your fabric. They're gonna give you these layouts already. So they do a lot of the work. Okay, so now I'm prepared to sew the, this horizontal and then this vertical buttonhole. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you on my sewing machine where I have, sorry, where I have my buttonhole. So my number 14 is my buttonhole maker. So I'm gonna hit that. And you'll see over here that the width has changed and the length has changed. And you can also see that the foot has changed. And then this light also pops up. This is the auto light. This is the light that I actually have to hit. I have to hit this button right here in order to make the buttonhole correctly. So what's gonna happen is, I'm gonna bring out my buttonhole real fast so you can kind of see. What it's gonna do is it's gonna create a left, a bottom, a right, and a top similar to the way that I drew the buttonhole when I was drawing the zigzags. So these are kind of um, indicators for you to see what it's working on at the time. So it's gonna start with the left side. So it's gonna start from the top and it's gonna zigzag stitch down to the bottom. That's the first thing it's gonna do. Once it does that, once it goes from the top down to the bottom, I need to pay attention. And when it touches this bottom line of the capital I, I need to hit the auto button and then it, the machine shifts, the needle shifts, and then it's gonna prompt me to do the bottom bar tack, and it's gonna go backwards and it's gonna zigzag up the right side. Then when I get to the top, I need to stop and I need to hit the button again, and then it'll do the top bar tack, and then it'll come down, tie a knot, and then it starts all the way back over again and gets prepared for the next buttonhole. This is the way most machines will do it if they're kind of manual. You may have an automatic buttonhole maker or you may have a foot that you can put on that will do an automatic buttonhole, but I don't know if everyone has that. So we're gonna go ahead and go this kind of manual way and we're gonna do it like this to start. So I'm gonna come back down. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna put a number three foot on my machine. Let me slide this over. So I'm gonna open up my box. I'm gonna pop out the three foot, because again, that's what it calls for. That's the one that it wants me to use. And I'm gonna pop off this foot here, drop off my zero, pop in my three. And I'm almost ready to straighten that out for you, okay. So, 
The main difference with the three foot, and I might pull this out just so you can kind of see it. The main difference is the opening is larger. So the hole here is bigger so you can kind of see what's happening under the foot. So that's really good. Another thing that you'll see that's different is that there's a little bite, kind of like a little ding on the side of the left part of the foot there. That's meant to line up with the top of the eye and the bottom of the eye. Then you'll also see a third toe. So it's got the bigger hole and an extra toe. That extra toe lines up with the middle where that little ding lines up with the top. And that keeps you straight while working with the whole stitch. So that's why the foot is different. And make sure that you're switching to the larger hole because that makes it a lot easier. So I'm gonna go ahead and pop my foot on. My machine is threaded and ready to go. I've hit the zigzag, I mean, I'm sorry. I've hit the buttonhole button so that I'm ready to sew a buttonhole. And now I've got my fabric prepared with three layers and then the capital I shapes drawn. And I'm gonna come and I'm gonna start with the top of the capital I again under the foot with that little bite at the top and the third toe in the middle. And I always like to start with the hand wheel down just because I feel like that lines me up really well so that I know that I'm actually centered. So perfect. And then I'm gonna go ahead and step on the pedal and I'm gonna let the machine do the stitch for me. So, so you can see it's a real tight zigzag. And again, I'm using the toe to kind of line up my drawing. And I'm just letting it do its thing. It's going kind of slow and that's okay. It's a really tight, really short, narrow zigzag and that's okay. I'm waiting until I get to the bottom of the capital I and then I'm gonna take my foot off the pedal. So I'm slowing down a little bit. I'm slowing down because I feel like I'm getting close and I'm really close. I'm there, so I'm gonna stop. And I'm gonna hit the auto button again. So I'm gonna hit the little button that lights up. And now it's gonna guide me to go across the bottom with the bar, bar tack. So I'm gonna go ahead and bar tack the bottom. You can see it's pretty wide. And then the machine is going backwards on its own. And again, it's really, really close. It's a really narrow stitch. So you might feel like, ah, oh, this is too close, but it's not. You want just a sliver of space between your buttonholes. That's where you're gonna cut it open. And you gotta pay attention, make sure that you're not going past your marking. So keep an eye, keep an eye. Oh, I'm seeing the top of it, I'm seeing the top of my purple. I'm there, I'm gonna stop. I'm gonna hit my auto button one more time. And I'm gonna do the top bar tack. And then once it's done with the bar tack, it comes down and it just tied a knot for me. My foot's still slamming on the pedal, but nothing's happening. And if you look over here, you'll see that the machine has reset and took me back to the first position. So it will actually stop and it will um, assume that you're gonna go ahead and lift this up, pull this out, and it's done. It's completed a knot for you. So from the top, it looks like this. And then from the bottom, I have pink thread on there. So it's a little harder to see, but it looks the same. So you should have a really symmetrical looking buttonhole. So now I'm gonna go ahead and kind of pull this down. And I'm gonna show you what I like to do when I cut my threads. I take my spool threads and I cut them really short on top. So real short, short as I can get them. You can kind of see, ooh, that's kind of like hanging out. It's kind of, you know, hanging on the side there, which doesn't look too great. So then I like to take my bobbin threads and I like to give them a little tug, just a little quick little pull. And then I cut those in the very back. And what that does is it helps to draw those really short little ugly black ones from the front and it brings them down to the back. Now, what you want to do is you want to open up this buttonhole and there's different ways that you can do that. You can do that with taking a pin, putting it on one end of the bar tack on the inside fabric, pinning it through, folding your buttonhole and stabbing it into the other end of the bar tack in the fabric. And then you can take your scissors or your seam ripper and you can cut across and then you can hope that the pin metal stops you. But that scares me a little bit. So I don't like to do that. So I like this buttonhole opener. It's just a little mat. It's the same type of material that your um, rotary board is made from. And it's healing, self-healing. And then there's a uh, buttonhole opener and it's just a very sharp little blade. And you can kind of see that. There it comes with the cover. And what you do is you set your fabric on the mat and you take your buttonhole opener and you set the blade in the little sliver of fabric in the middle, making sure not to land on any of the stitches. So do not put your 
splayed on stitches because then it'll open up and it'll undo all your work. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna push down on the cutter and you can feel free to kind of go back and forth like this, top to bottom, but don't go side to side. So I call it like you can teeter totter, but don't go side to side with it because then you might slide, slip, and then uh, cut your threads. So I'm gonna go ahead and put my hand on top and I'm gonna push until I hear a crunch. And I fill and hear the crunch. And then I'm gonna move down to the other side of the buttonhole and I'm gonna do the same thing. You can kind of hear it crunching. And then I'm going to see that I have this beautifully open buttonhole. Now, if I take that button that I had measured earlier and I try to slip it through this one inch buttonhole, it's gonna feel tight. So do you see how it's kind of, ah, it'll go, but it's very tight. And you can kind of see it's like kind of puckering. That's why, because this had some thickness to it, that's why you wanna make sure that you're measuring everything and doing it correctly. This button requires one and an eighth of an inch, so a little bit larger. So actually for this bottom one here, I'm gonna go a little bit bigger. You guys can do two one inch buttonholes, but I'm gonna do this one just a smidgen bigger. I'm gonna do one and an eighth. So, they're pretty, huh? Uh -huh. I say this pretty, this one is pretty out of it. Yeah, you think that one's the most pretty? We'll sew it onto the fabric right now. Um, Jack, oh, Jack, it's Abby's turn. Okay. Okay, so I'm gonna make this one ever so slightly longer. Just a tad bit longer, so an eighth of an inch more. Go ahead and you can go play now. He's gonna give you the remote. Okay, sorry, video game corals. Okay. Now, I'm gonna do this one, and I'm gonna do this one vertically. So, I'm gonna go ahead and line this back up, bring this back down, and I'll straighten this out for you if I can. Okay, so, now we're gonna do a vertical buttonhole. And again, I need to make sure everything's lined up, so I wanna make sure that the top of my capital I is underneath the little bite in the foot. So I'm gonna move that forward just a hair. And I wanna make sure that the center is lined up with the center of the capital I and the middle toe. I'm gonna hold my threads back. I wanna make sure that my machine is ready to go. And I'm gonna go ahead and stitch. And again, it's gonna go pretty slow at first. And that's okay, these ones take longer. Make sure you're paying attention. I have that first marking, but I'm gonna go past it because I know I have a second marking coming somewhere and it's right there. Okay, so I'm gonna stop there because I'm on it. I'm gonna hit my auto button again. I'm gonna do the bottom of my bar tack. I'm gonna come back up the right and again, it does it on its own. So I'm just kind of holding the fabric to guide it to make sure that it's on the right track. Just a sliver of space in between. Keep an eye out for the top. I'm kind of watching my thread and I'm looking for my purple mark. This one's a little bit longer, so just keep going until you get to the end. Okay, I'm gonna stop. And I'm gonna hit my auto again so that I can do my top bar tack. And once it's done with the bar tack, again, it's gonna tie it in a knot for you. So I'm gonna go ahead and lift that up. Pull this away from the machine. Cut my thread nice and short. And then you can see that now I have this nice vertical. And I'm gonna bring this back down. So we can kind of look at that. It's a little bit longer. I don't know if you can see that, but it's a tad bit longer than this, eighth of an inch longer. I'm gonna prepare it by snipping these threads nice and short, flipping it to the back, giving these a little bit of a tug, 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 tug. And voila, I have my one and an eighth. I'm gonna open this one back up now. And sorry, my hand's in front of the camera. Again, I can go kind of top down, but don't go side to side because then you might slip and then you might cut your threads and that would be very bad. If you do cut your threads, uh, then you kind of have to start from the beginning at the read of your buttonholes and then you may even have to interface the fabric and kind of mend it. So this one's one and an eighth, a tiny bit larger than this one here. And so if I take my white button, now you can see, now that fits well. It's not too tight, but it's not so, it's not loosey-goosey, but it fits this one really well. This one, you really,